Hello y'all, this is Red Flood, a mod for Hearts of Iron Force set in a world where nobody was able to truly win World War One. We're going to pick Yugoslavia, which recently got a focus tree. I'm not sure what the lore is exactly, but it is led by an accelerationist who at one point overthrew the Serbian government and later led the Black Hand, who is responsible for the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. For our military and army, we have 22 divisions, 17 infantry, 3 cavalry, and 2 mountain. And as for the Air Force, it's 2 air wings, which comes out to almost 100 fighters. For our army commanders, there is a lot of generals and a single field marshal, which is better than none. Looking at Yugoslavia's military technology, we have up-to-date guns, motorized, no tanks at all, basic artillery, and as far as aircraft go, when we get there, only starting fighters from 1933. The Red Flood mod recently got a UI change, which is pretty extensive from what I heard is based off of Art Deco style, and they also changed the appearance of the resource icons, which can be seen here. Let's begin the focus tree with the All Belgrade National Congress, then below that we'll go with Hay Slabs, which upon completion gives us an event named the Electoral Congress, where we may choose our next country leader. This mod recently added annexation events, which is experimental for the time being, so let's keep them turned off now, but I am curious to see what this will transform into in later updates. Nikola Tesla, renowned Serb inventor, arrives back to Yugoslavia after living in the United States for the better part of the last 50 years. He makes a speech at the University of Belgrade, where he shows his interest of attempting to become the leader of the nation, and he seems to be getting some support as a perceived, sensible person who wants to reform Yugoslavia. Dragutin Dmitrijevic, the man who took power and put out the flames out of the country, fell into chaos, has chosen to resign, viewing himself as a strong man. He now wishes for the people to decide who shall represent them best. Tesla and another man have put forth their proposals at the National Assembly. Security must be chosen for the Electoral Council's safety. There are three choices, but let's go with the Hungarian who left his country and is also a good friend of Nikola Tesla, Miksa Deri. The Electoral Congress must choose the successor of Dmitrijevich. Let's go with the man on the left, Nikola Tesla. This will result in him being voted into power. Because of the choices we made, we can go down a political branch, starting with Comrade Tesla, and out of that go with Yugoslav Technate, which will give us some factories. Looking over to Asia, the Japanese peace out with the Chinese and the Beijing compromise. Korea has some internal problems to deal with, like the Korean People's Republic and the Korean government declaring war on the Kingdom of Korea. While this is going on, Japan falls into a civil war. An alternative history novel named The Blue Drought releases in Britain. Its premise is that World War I was avoided and the world stagnated, leading to the rise of radical ideologies like Darwinist and Absurdist. Tesla is in charge. He has the trait popular figurehead as what he did historically, he is well known as an inventor who created the Tesla coil and contributed greatly to the modern day alternating current electricity system. He also proposed a defensive weapon called the Teleforce, which is similar to the concept of a railgun. Born in 1856, he is almost 80 at the start of 1936. The technate focus is done. France is fighting one of their neighbors, but as for us, let's start to focus modernize the slabs, and after that, we shall integrate the socialists. Let's turn to one of our neighbors, the Bulgarian Republic, and begin justifying a war goal on them so we can ultimately expand the size of the country. This event announces the start of the Spanish Civil War. Let's take a look at some of the combatants. We have the Spanish Republic, the North African garrison led by Franco just sort of exist, and the National Front is fighting the Republic, which is led by a guy with a pipe, a bow tie, and a skull mask. Over in the Middle East, just right of Turkey and below Armenia, Assyria begins battling the nearby Kingdom of Al Jazeera. In the next part of Focus Tree, and continuing down the political branch, let's start Yugoslav Socialism, then go down left to Experimental Industry and Modern Authoritarianism, then go to the right and do Science Knows No Morality and Modern Payrun, then top it all off with the last focus for Tesla and that is the Focus Techno Slavia. Our war goal has finished justifying for Bulgaria and we're going to use that and invade that particular country. The first few clashes on the border are swinging in our favor for the most part, but we are losing a couple of them for the time being. Hopefully though, if we punch through their center, that should give us an easy path toward their capital, Sofia. Yugoslavian divisions managed to trap some of their Bulgarian opponents. That will destroy a portion of their army. And besides that, we did take their most important city, so they shall remain on the defensive in this war. The Bulgarian Republic is defeated 
defeated, they will be annexed entirely as a result. This will greatly expand the presence of our nation in the Balkans. News and more conflicts breaking out. The United Provinces fights the Federal Republic of India, and Transbaikal starts engaging the Russian state. Technoslavia is completed with all that finished. Let's go to the foreign policy part of the focus tree and begin future of Yugoslavia. After that, choose revolutionary pan-Slavism, and after that, approach France, which gets them and their allies to like us more. Future of Yugoslavia actually unlocked a couple decisions for us, and looking at those, they involve fortifying the Austrian and Hungarian borders, which we will do just to be safe. Resistance is rising in Bulgaria, mainly because I have set the occupied territories tab for it to no garrison at all because I wanted to keep manpower and equipment that would have gone to it for other purposes. The pan-Slavism focus gave us another diplomacy-oriented decision, that is to demand Slovenia from Austria to help encourage the Austrians to make the choice that favors us. The whole Yugoslav army has been sent to sit at the border we share. If they choose to decline our demand, we do have 31 divisions ready to go, and we will take it by force. They have decided to give the state of Slovenia to us without a fight. How kind of them. It doesn't seem the Austrians have any troops there themselves since there is only one division moving out of that territory we now control. Moving down the foreign policy path, Ron Moore will do our right to Adriatic Join League Solar, which is the French faction, and complete that part with Balkan dominance. Our next target to invade is Albania, which is being guaranteed by Switzerland, which surprised me a little bit. It's fine, we'll have someone get to them eventually, even if we can't reach that country at this moment. Something is happening in Spain. The National Front split. Spain is declaring war on the Federation of Anarchists of Iberia. There's a lot of Spain fighting Spain action, and there's a news event about the anarchists appearing. Overall, if you take a look at the country after this, the borders look like an abstract painting. Our rights to Adriatic is done. We can lay out claims on Dalmatia, which makes Fiomi happy. Liberate Montenegro, which gives us a war goal, and conquer Albania, which is another war goal decision. This one will come in handy. We strike at Albania. We have 32 divisions facing their smaller force, and the Swiss can only watch in horror this whole time because they're landlocked. Albania is absorbed into Yugoslavia. That leaves us with the conundrum of dealing with a country we have no sort of way to get to. We join the League Solar. We have the support of avant-garde France and Fiume, and they have ours in return. The French wish to join our war with the Swiss. Well, that's just convenient. Sure, why not? By doing this, we have unintentionally given our new allies, the French, a free country as a gift. Balkan dominance is done, and in a nutshell of how this whole endeavor went, we got Albanian mountains and France got Swiss mountains. More decisions from a focus, they consist of war goals to puppet the Romanians and Greeks, and another one at the bottom that demands land from the Hungarians. Fiume is getting ready to attack Italy, we're letting them do it at their own pace, and once that has started, we'll use that as an opportunity to make our move on Montenegro and take land from them. Let's finish the diplomacy branch as a whole with the Bulgarian question and after that move into the industrial part of the tree starting with what is to be done and socialist model. Things are happening in Eastern Europe. The Ruthenian Empire declared war on the Baltic general government. The Empire is also fighting the Russian state which is far away. I think they will get the support of the rest of the Intermarium faction but the Ruthenian Empire may buy off more than they can chew if they use all the war goals they currently have. The Bulgarian question. Normally this would have given us a chance to go to war with them but we did that ages ago so we can just get the cores on their states from this event without any problems. Fiume launched their war with the Italians. Now is our moment to go to the Kingdom of Montenegro, a subject of Italy. We are pushing into the Montenegrin defenses. It shouldn't be too long before we have a breakthrough. One enemy down, one to go. Now to send our troops off to help our allies in the Italian peninsula. The Scopia incident. Let's go with the Bulgarian shall pay for this choice to get the National Spirit French military mission, which has some nice effects. Using our decisions, let's go ahead and demand land from Hungary, and after that start the one that will give us a war goal to puppet Romania. The Hungarians, like the Austrians, gave in without a fight. Moving on, let's start setting up our forces to combat the Romanians and eventually our southern neighbor, Greece. In the focus tree, let's do local infrastructural works, urban revolution, draft of five-year plans, cult of labor, and last but not least, once we get down there, unity and brotherhood. Lithuania got annexed by the Russian Empire, and it seems Poland is next on the chopping block. We're ready to attack the despotic kingdom of Romania. Once they are handled, we'll turn our attention to reaction Greece. Yugoslav soldiers seized part of the Romanian coastline facing the Black Sea, now to push inward to their core states. With the Romanians dealt with, after an all-out advance, we fight the Greeks, which if the current situation continues, a portion of their army will be split off from the main part as we move through Thessalonica. Greece does control some land in Anatolia, and they do have some troops there just in case our ally joins, which we have no plans of having them do so, but at least it keeps some of the enemy soldiers away from the front lines. We are isolating divisions 
resurgence of our foes as we continue the offensive. Meanwhile, we are making our way to Athens and the Peloponnese. That is done. We'll grab some land like West Thrace and South Macedonia and get a new puppet state. Going even further, we're going to puppet Transylvania, then use them as a launching pad to do the same with the Czechoslovak Kingdom. Transylvania is putting up a good fight, but we do outnumber them with units and equipment, I believe, so it's only a matter of time until their country is under our control. At some point, the Cavcast Society got in our faction, and it looks like they are about to have a war of their own very soon. They attack the much larger Southeastern Union, and they have already got so many members of the League Solar to support them. As for Yugoslavia's participation, I'm not so sure about that. Germany declared war on Denmark. They're not actually fighting one country, rather, it's just a subject of Sweden Norway who gets pulled in and they'll most likely drag in the Norwegian military government too. We are rushing hard into Czechoslovakia and hope to be quick enough to take as much as we can before their divisions can entrench themselves. We have practically won, but we gotta walk into Prague, the Czechoslovak kingdom capital, to make it official. We made two puppets, including Accelerationist Ukraine, which only has Carpathian Ruthenia because the rest of it was taken by the Russian Empire after the Intimarium lost. A sea of blood. Well, that's ominous and seems somewhat important. That explains it. Avant-garde France declared war on Germany. We will most likely get involved in this conflict. Using one of our newly acquired subjects, we open up another front and throw everything we have against the Germans while our allies fight the Hungarians. In the focus tree, since this is a good time, let's go ahead and begin the military focuses, which can only benefit us more in this war. There is very few German soldiers standing in our way as we advance toward Berlin. It's probably safe to assume their military is overextended. That may have been where their priorities were since we just got news that Sweden, Norway, and company were beaten. Hungary has exited the picture as they were taken out by our French and Italian allies. Not helping matters, they were unable to get aid from their own faction members due to their geographical position. Even with their freed up troops coming down from Scandinavia, it's too little too late because Germany is sandwiched by the League Solar. We just had a little peace treaty. Luxembourg is taken by France and all of Hungary is now Yugoslavia. And as for Germany, they are left to face their fate since the other third international members have left the war. We are victorious and so is our faction. We aren't going to take any land, instead we'll just satellite and puppet as many countries as possible. After all the wars and fighting in this playthrough, we have acquired more than 10 puppets. One of the most notable things created is the Orenburg Military District, which is typically in Russia, but thanks to skill maneuvering at the peace conference, it now exists in Norway. Yugoslavia has come a long way. Once a country with a stable but uncertain future, it has emerged as a mighty power in a league solar dominated northern, central, and western Europe. The video is going to end here. If you enjoyed the mod, make sure to check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment. Have an awesome day. I'll see y'all later. Bye.